Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today is Sunday evening for us. Monday morning for you. Yeah. Why is that playing? Oh. Gonna kill your phone. Well, we're not gonna kill your phone. But your battery. The battery will die. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how you guys doing? Good. No, them. We're good. Yeah. I'm part of them. I'm them. You're them? I'm them. Oh. <laughs> cool. Um, I want to remind you guys. I have some copies of these. Wait. Are those the... Oh, no. Those are the newer this ones. Is not the my testi- this is not my testimony. No, these aren't originals. This is the second edition. Okay. This is a book I wrote back in the 90s, 99. I don't know why I put my face in the front of it, because it's not a life autobiography. But anyways, it's a novel. I have a few copies of it, guys. If you're watching this, like, within the it's next good. few days. Um, I really enjoyed that one. You know how I had the pre-orders on the website? Mm-hmm. And I took it down because I said go to Amazon? I mean, the reality is I do have copies, you know. But I don't want to, like, put it out there on the website. But if you're a viewer... Um, you know, you could always ask me if I have copies, because I, I always have copies of my testimony. Why is it blurry? Mm. There it is. I thought it was just my eyes. You know, I always have copies of these, because sometimes people want them signed. I just don't put it on the website, because I don't want to get overwhelmed mailing, 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 when, yeah. when people could just get it from Amazon. But since you guys are family, I just want you to know, if you ever want to get one of these, just let me know. Uh, just email and um, I'll give you instructions on, on how to order it. Amen. So today was a it was a good day. Um, <laughs> you like Ice Cube? Today was a good day. Is that what he says? That's yeah, one of how his songs. How does he say it? Today was a good day. Today was a good day. <laughs> All right. So because I didn't have to use my AK. <laughs> I don't want to sing that. Today was oh, okay. I don't like it. It's a it's a famous Ice Cube song. I still don't like it. So anyhow, um, it was a really good day. We had um, an opportunity to go up and and share uh, together. She preached with me. It was pretty cool. Um, you know, just being able at the beginning um, to to share how we met, when how we were when we were single how we came into meeting and then the marriage and, and all of that. And then maybe we touched on maybe two, two or three of, um, things that would, uh, that needed conflict resolution within between us, you know? Yeah. Well, the, the sermon we did today was called conflict resolution. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously it's self-explanatory. So you should go watch, you should listen or go to watch it. Cause if you're listening on the podcast and you'll be able to listen to it, and if you're watching it, go back in and watch it. So many people were really like, it made them think. And that was a whole reason for it. Because, yeah. <clears throat> you know, a lot of times um, in a relationship, you become so toxic that you feel like, how, how, how can this even be fixed? How did we get here? Well, it's not more just, of, of how did we even get here? Yeah, it's like not so much just toxic, but you become complacent. Um, you become toxic and you lose something that is that that brought you together in the first place, which is a great love well, you, for one another. Yeah, a lot of times it's almost like as if you wake up one day and there's this huge distance between you and your partner, and you're like, "How did this happen?" Yeah, you know, and that's what we talked about today. So if that is something that is you or something that interests you, or something you've done in the past, but you're single now, but you're like, I don't want to repeat this again later. Please watch today's sermon called Conflict Conflict Resolution. Yeah, Conflict Resolution. And um, it was a really important sermon. Um, Not only that, but it was our first time preaching together. That was a new thing. Uh, To be able to, how do you do a sermon to people and, and let it flow? Yeah. You know, and uh, I'm really proud of Sharon. She did great, you know, and um, I'm used to preaching by myself up there, you Thank know. You, babe. And uh, it was it was cool. It was nice. And uh, so many people 
were talking about it after because we I think had, we had a lot of a lot of uh, people that are single, yeah. um, a lot of single people and uh, people that maybe their significant others don't come to church or something. It was really, really, really important um, because we wanted to touch on that subject as well. And being that we do have a mixture of single, uh, widowed, we have uh, just, you know, a, a person that's serving on their own. Then we have young adults and we have teenagers and youth and everything. I think today was um, a message that was for all around. Yeah. And even though um, it kind of it was kind of geared towards marriage, but it actually spoke to many different uh, different relationships, mm-hmm. you know, statuses and everything. And I think that's what made it very interesting because if you guys don't know, um, me and David have been married now three years and together for five, maybe a little bit, five in a few months. Um, and it took a long, um, I got to repeat the, hold on, go back to two years, two and a half years now, almost right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because October is our, our anniversary. October is a long time away. I know. I keep forgetting that we're barely in, in, in March. But um, it just, you know, being able to go through the process um, and showing the process of two broken people coming single. And, you know, and there was a point where we no longer spoke about our relationship, but we kind of went into some of the experiences that that we've seen others have, um, general experiences that we go through with maybe some couples um, and the things that we observe and we see. And what we did is we went ahead and tied that all in because these are real issues. Yeah. They're real circumstances and situations that take place. And at, and at first, you know, I, I was like, I had to make sure that I had to give a disclaimer at the end and be like, wait a minute here, this... Everything that we spoke about, you know, when we were putting up the wall had nothing to do, you know, specifically with us, but it's because of experiences and the things that we see people go. And because we have lived life, these are situations that are real. So those were things that we needed to bring out um, and and be able to to share with people because we did notice some people were like, man, I was getting worried. I thought that was your guys' life. And I'm like, no, can you imagine (laughs) Can you imagine if really, truly, we were like truly like this at home? That'd be crazy. Yeah. You know, I I, I just, how can we come and minister with all of this baggage Mm -hmm. and all of that and building walls? How can we in any way possible come and minister to you when we don't have our things in order? Yeah. So it is so important that for you guys that do go back and watch from the beginning, know that um, just watch to the end, watch to the end and and listen to everything that has to be said. You know, a lot of a lot of times. um, And what was interesting, it wasn't just toward marriage. It it was a lot of it toward uh, relationships as far as even our children with your with your parents, with your children, with your brother, with your sister, with your best friend, with coworkers, is that a wall gets put up and and it almost feels like overnight all of a sudden there's this distance between this person uh, but a brick wall doesn't get put overnight it gets put brick by brick and what can start you know with the few bricks between you uh just continue to build and we talk about that in the sermon that i don't want to go through the whole sermon again when you can just watch it but um <clears throat> we try to use different examples of how these bricks get put one at a time, and before you know it, you can't even see each other. Yeah. And so many people love that little illustration. I remember when we learned this uh, about this, we loved it, and we're just like, man, this is crazy. You know, this is this is something that is a great tool because when somebody's coming out of addiction, there's people that that are uh, counselors that give them tools on how to mm-hmm. how to deal with that, or alcohol, or different things. So. This was an amazing tool for your arsenal to not l- allow walls to get built, to not allow relationships, whether it's uh, romantic relationships or friendships or whatever, to not allow that to become uh, uh, toxic, mm-hmm. you know. And 
It's just an amazing, amazing tool. It's one of those tools that, to me, is a game changer. Yeah. You know, and... And it's really, uh, really important because if if these are not things that we're, we're dealing with, if these are not things that we're trying to resolve in any way, there's so much discord and there's so much conflict and it can cause... It can cause someone so much pain and really cause uh, somebody to lose their life to the kingdom, you know? Yeah. And and see, our To lose whole, your life to the kingdom? I, I mean, sorry, to lose a life for them coming to the kingdom. Oh. So, I'm sorry, I, I know. Um, and, and that's so important because our mandate is to bring people to the kingdom, to introduce people yeah. to Jesus, to share Jesus with them so that they can come to the kingdom not keep them from the kingdom yeah so th for that reason that's why it's so so important that we learn um there's never you can never say that there's never room to learn and 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 i think that's that's important because a lot of the times we think that we already know it we don't have to why do i have to be there you know, I I don't need any of this, you know. I'm single and I'm not married. Why do I need to learn this? Why this and why that? But the thing is, is that coming together as a community, coming together, you know, collectively to learn something together, I think it's important because it builds strength yeah. within the people. And we need to strengthen one another um, because there may be the one that says, I don't need to go there, I don't need to do this, but how do you know that you're not gonna be a blessing to somebody who doesn't know anything? Mm -hmm. You know, so important. Um, let's remember that we always keep an open heart, an open mind, and we be able to receive and always learn. There's nothing wrong with learning every day. Yeah. You know, one of the, the scriptures I did talk about in, in the sermon is, is one I use a lot. <clears throat> I, I say this all the time because I love it, where it says we're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And that's true. You know, when we come to Christ, he makes us a new person. Mm -hmm. He takes a heart of stone out, puts in a heart of flesh. Uh, but what isn't quoted a lot is the next verse, which is basically in summary. I, I don't remember that one as good as I remember seven, uh, verse 17. But verse 18 basically says that, because we're a new creation in Christ, God has reconciled us, meaning there was a wall between us and God. And he reconciled that because it's like Jesus became the bridge mm -hmm. for, for us to the Father in heaven because he, he, he is God. And he, he came to be a human to become a bridge, basically. And, and the Bible says an interesting thing. In one of the, the um, translations, it says, and because he reconciled us, he gave us the gift of reconciliation. Amen. You know, and this is the whole spin-off thing here, guys, is that if you are in Christ, you have been given a gift by God. Amen. And that gift is to reconcile. In other words, if he reconciled all of your sins with himself, then how can we not try to reconcile our relationships with those people that are our loved ones. Yeah. You know, and I, to me, that was a strong, the strong nucleus of this whole thing is that how dare we walk around uh, washed of our sins against God, yet sometimes somebody has done us wrong and we're, we're unwilling to reconcile that. Yeah. You know, and, you know, the, 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 the Bible gives us a commandment to forgive. Amen. That's a hard one. Yeah. That's a hard one, you know, but it's not a suggestion, guys. He's not suggesting that we forgive. He's commanding. And another thing is just because he's telling you to forgive doesn't not even necessarily mean the person's going to forgive you. Yeah. But that's not the point, right? That isn't the point. The point is that you forgive, that you let go, you know, and Well, I told somebody today, you know, um I said, "Listen, we've been forgiven to forgive." And it's real plain and simple. You know, if God could forgive us, then we can forgive others. Mm -hmm. And we got to remember that, that we too were forgiven because there is nobody, nobody out here that exists with no blemish except for Jesus, you know, and we got to remember that he's the only perfection. We can strive for perfection, but we'll never be perfect. 
yeah. you know, we can always strive to do our best and give our best and, and want to always go above and exceeding. But the thing is, is that there's only one without flaw. And if we were forgiven for that, even one flaw for anything, then we too are mandated to forgive. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I don't know. I just had a really good time doing the sermon with you. I did too. You know, it was, it was fun. It was powerful. It was informative. You know, I hope a lot of you watched it already. If not, then I pray that you'll watch it or listen to it on the podcast mm -hmm. after after listening or watching this video. You know, and um, and for those who yeah. are on the podcast, uh -huh. um, I know because you you're gonna have to use your imagination and kind of capture the visual of it as well, because when you hear us speak on the points, we are actually building a wall. Yeah. And that wall just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where David and I can no longer see each other. Um, and that's when you hear that, you'll understand why we're saying that it's because we're we were building a physical wall. Yeah. And um, it was crazy because as you were doing that, it, it was almost heartbreaking to see that this is real in people's lives, yeah. you know? And as we were going through it, every time I'd put like, you know, a brick up or put, it wasn't even a brick, but there were like some, some boxes that were, you know, shaped like, you know, like a wall type thing. Every time I'd put one up, it was kind of like, man, these are real issues. These are yeah. real things that people go through, yeah. you know? And, and, I was praising God, though, through them saying, God, Lord, man, thank you for not allowing us to go through this. And then there were some that I was like, man, Lord, oh, my God, I just realized that this is some of us, you know, that yeah. this is some of me. And I'm like, could I be like this? And there was so many things going through my mind as I was building. And, I, and it made me realize some things. Like, you know, communication barriers and certain things that sometimes we get so busy that we yeah. can't, you know, find the time to communicate. And then our children, you know, how how this too, how we realize how sometimes we can even build a wall with our children yeah, and not even realize it. And sometimes it can be just of silence because our children are actually needing more of us and we start to build a wall. Yeah. So there's just so many things, guys. So... For the, those who are listening on podcasts, I want you to be able to visualize that, that as we're going through each point um, after the marriage part and after we speak about the marriage and everything, um, you'll start seeing some points and we'll talk about boxes and that's what we're, the baggage, and yeah. that's what we're actually doing is we're stacking them up in the middle till we, so we don't see each other anymore. You know, one of the things that was, that was um, like a, a supplemental thing to the sermon, I didn't mean for this to happen, was because we were flowing together. We had the same notes because we wrote the sermon together the previous night. And um, she had her tablet. I had mine on my side. So we knew where each other was. Um, what I didn't anticipate was <clears throat> a lot of the sermon was going back and forth. It was visual. She kind of gave me a look like, you take over here. And then I would say my thing, and I, I knew in the notes what I was saying, and then I, and she knew where she was following, and then I would give her this look, and so this this real flow was happening between both of us. And like one thing that happened by accident was when that wall came up, even though we had the same notes, I started feeling out of step with her because I couldn't see her in order to say, "Hey, this part you talk here," mm -hmm. and vice, and I noticed like. <laughs> Like for me, it, it became a struggle to actually flow through the sermon with her because this wall was there. And even though I could hear her, I couldn't visually see her. And that that taught me something because I'm just like, wow, that's crazy. Even though we have the same notes and even though she's right there, just literally I could hear her voice. But yet we didn't have that body language to be able to flow mm -hmm. through the sermon. And it got real choppy. And I don't know if anybody noticed it, but I noticed it. And I'm like, wow. You but know, yet so, then everybody so I, else can see us. So I learned something there. And that was, that was crazy for me. And that wasn't even meant to be. 
But it was something that when I once I couldn't see her, we we're on the same stage. It was a disconnect. Yeah, there was a disconnect that happened, and and yeah. I found that very interesting myself because that that taught me a lot. I'm not sure if I'm putting in in, in the right words, but um, maybe later on after I really think about it, um, because that in itself showed a lot uh, when there's a wall between people of that. It's like all of a sudden it's like a, an engine that the spark plug is bad. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you have let's say you have a V6 or a V8. If one of the spark plugs is, is bad, it'll start skipping, and and um, it won't it won't sound right. The engine yeah. won't start sound right because there's a firing order. Cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it keeps going. And if one of them is off, it starts to sound um, abnormal. And uh, in the same way, a marriage can start to not run right. What happens when a spark plug's wrong in a car? You start to burn more gas than you're supposed to. Mm-hmm. You start to burn using more oil. Using more energy. Using more energy to make the free, you know, so if everything is running right, the car runs smooth, you can serve on gas, and and the wear and tear of the car isn't so harsh, you know. And so in the same way, in our relationships, sometimes it requires so much energy because it just needs a tune-up. It needs a tune-up, you know, so... Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I love that analogy because it's the same thing when things are not in order, you begin to get stress, anxiety, a lot of these things. And a lot of those things, when you're, when you're overwhelmed with a lot of other things, it takes you away from the important mm-hmm. things. It takes, it, it takes time, number one, um, and it keeps you from being able to take the time to sit down and to enjoy the life with your family, to enjoy the life with your husband, to enjoy the life with those that you love, because you're so consumed with worry. You're so consumed with stress. You're so consumed with just thinking about things. And all of that takes time and it will take you away from so many things and not realizing that time is precious. It is so precious, you know? Like I said at the end of the sermon today, I said, man, look at your spouse, look at your loved one, tell them you love them. Because if if we're so consumed with so many other things, like literally we can walk out the door and I can go to the grocery store and I can get hit by a car. There's so many things that can happen. There's so many instances that can happen. And you never know when that time is going to come. Yeah. And you missed out on all the opportunities that you can have to spend on those that you love than to spend it on stress and arguments, conflict, disagreements. There's always a solution. If there is a situation, there's a solution yeah. for every circumstance. Ah, I like that. All right. Well. So. All right, guys, we're going to call it an evening. Well, an evening for us. Um, <laughs> make sure that if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If uh, uh, if you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure you follow our podcast because we put daily devotionals every single day, Monday through Friday. Uh, we put sermons. We put, oh, well, that's it. Uh, we put Pastor Carlos. We put Pastor Rick. We have future people on the podcast, so uh, make sure if you are on that, uh, which is uh, the main... We have many podcast uh, platforms, but the main one is... Uh, well, what is it? Oh, Spotify. Yeah, Spotify. <laughs> I'm on Spotify. Yeah, uh, but like I said, if you're on YouTube, thumbs up, subscribe. But most of all, I always say this, leave a comment. We enjoy Amen. your comments. Amen. Another thing I wanted to... Um, bring out was that we've had people that have have actually messaged us um and messaged you directly uh regarding prayer and i want you to know that i'm gonna definitely be submitting and continue to pray for you guys um and submit those to our prayer team as well we now have a prayer team that goes out to the church um every monday Mm -hmm. and they're going to be praying for all these prayer requests which is amazing because Man, when when two or more are gathered, there's so much power in prayer, you know, and um, they're intercessor prayers. And I'm really, really excited because, 
you know, I'm, I'm receiving requests and we're receiving requests and we just want to supply and, and, and pray for those who are asking for prayer and also go exceedingly and above and continue praying for them. Um, because we know that things happen through prayer, things happen. So, you know, if you have a prayer request, feel free to, to message us at the house arrest church at gmail.com and let us know. And I will definitely forward that over to our team um, so that we can continue praying for you. And, you know, we've been reading the comments and everything. And I know David can probably get to them more than me throughout the days, but I, I, I listen to them too. So if I'm giving you a thumbs up, I, I'm saying amen to them, you know, because I don't get much time during my lunch and stuff, but I'm definitely saying amen and agreeing and coming in agreement with those. But we love you guys, man. We love you guys. And we just thank you for, for being a part of this family um, and just for, you know, learning with us and seeking with us and, and growing with us more than anything because we need each other. Iron sharpens iron and we need each other so that we can grow together so see you guys later. We love you. All right. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Bye.